Welcome to my channel. I'm Kasaya. This is Saya Swag and I have been invited to do the tutorial and help kind of pick out the supplies and what this bag looks like and the pattern for this month's Bag Making Bees Club. If you haven't heard of it, it's a subscription box made from Wonderground Fabrics, Jess of Okla Roots, and Jay from Heartwood and Hyde. And it is chock full of goodies. It is adorable. I'm in love. I was able to kind of help design this one. You know I'm on the neon kick, right? I love the neon right now. So of course we designed this neon type Louis waist bag. That's the design. That's the pattern that I chose. It is one of my all time favorite patterns. I've probably made 10 plus by now. It's just such a great bag. Let's go over all of the things about this. Now there was an unboxing video done by Jess of Okla Roots. If you want to see her unbox this subscription box, it is just adorable what's included with it. There's lots of extra materials too. So I could probably make another bag out of the Lux nylon that was left with it, which is amazing. I love that. All right. So this is all Lux nylon, this whole bag, which no interfacing needed. That's always a plus. I love that so much. This is kind of my favorite color of this Lux nylon. So we went off of this and added this lime neon green and black. I mean, how could you go wrong? Okay. So you have this awesome, my bad seam ripper tag from Heartwood and Hyde. Jade's awesome. She designed it just for this bag. We have all this other beautiful hardware. We have these cute zipper pulls with neon green bees. I mean, you guys, so cute. The zipper tape and this webbing is glow in the dark. What more do you want? I don't know. Um, I did the small size. You can do the medium one. It has a zipper pocket on the back and you can mix and match your materials. You don't have to do it exactly like I did. There is enough to do it differently. Um, it's just, whatever you fancy. And then inside we have our, ooh, look at that. I have another, I already had tags made with those neon colors from Jade, Heartwood and Hyde. And so it matched my bag perfectly. Uh, so there is my inside. There is binding. She includes this reflective ribbon. That's an inch wide. That's perfect for binding your bag. So it will like reflect light, which is really cool. I mean, guys, okay, so cute. Go check out the subscription box. I will link it below. You can read all the details about it. It changes every month. Um, it's stuff that Jess and Gabby and Jade design along with uh, guest people like myself. Um, sometimes the tutorials are done by Jess. Sometimes they're done by guest people. So that's kind of fun. Gives you some options. And I hope you guys love this as much as I do. I really enjoyed making this. And let me know if you guys have any comments or questions. Let's start making this cute bag. Okay, let's go over our pieces that we need for this Louis waist bag. I am doing the small size. There is a medium size as well. There is plenty of material if you wanted to do the medium size. But I'm choosing the small because it's my favorite. All right, so the pieces aren't hard. You don't have to interface anything which is the fabulousness of this Lux nylon material. All right, so I have my main panel. I've got one exterior and two lining pieces. I have my back lining, just one of those. My back bottom, you should have one exterior and one lining. So I'm, I'm doing black and green for my lining. I'm mixing the two. My back top, one exterior. My zipper gusset, you should have an exterior and a lining. My base, two pieces, lining and exterior. And because of my seam allowance, so she suggests three eighths in the pattern. This is the one thing I do differently. She suggests three eighths. I can't get a three eighths inch seam allowance around my zipper unless I change to a zipper foot. So I do a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around the zipper and everything, which 
then ends up changing the width of my zipper panel. And to make up for that, I just extend my base piece by a half of an inch. So I added a half inch to the width of my base piece lining and exterior. If you are using a 3 8 inch, you don't have to do that. But if you use a quarter inch seam allowance, like I am going to do, extend your base piece by a half inch widthwise. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. All right, and then I have my strap wings. You should have two of those. And my zipper flange, flangey, flange, however you wanna say it. You should have four of those, two exterior, two lining, and they need to be mirrored. Now, this Lex Nylon, it's hard to tell, to tell front and back, so it's not going to be the end of the world if they're the, you know, one's one and one's the other, but try and mirror those pieces. The black, you can kind of tell a difference, but this pinkish peach color, coral, not so much. So you should have four of those mirrored if possible. For your other items that are included in the kit, so all of this is included in your kit, you have this glow-in-the-dark webbing, which is super cool. I'm excited to use this. I've got that cut to the length that I want it. And then I have an extra piece, I believe, for the buckle is what I need that for. I've been doing mine just a tiny bit differently without a buckle, so I'll do this one with the buckle, though. I have my zipper tape cut. I have one long one for the main um, the main closure and then a shorter one for the zipper on the back. This comes with this reflective binding. So it's just ribbon that we're using to bind the inside of the bag and we're only binding one side. It's not a lot of binding. So don't let that um, deter you from doing this bag. It's pretty simple, but it's cute. It's reflective. I love it. And then it comes with a tag that were specially made from Heartwood and Hyde saying, my bad. So cute. And lucky me, I had her make me some neon ones that match exactly. So I'll put one of them on the outside and one of them on the inside. This kit comes with these gorgeous zipper pulls, these B <laughs> zipper pulls. So I have two for my main closure and one plain one for my back zipper pocket. These are so adorable. And then you have your pack. You have a metal black buckle, a D-ring, which you you don't need the D-ring. The D-ring is like an extra little thing to put on your strap to clip stuff to. So you could leave the D-ring out if you want. I will add it just so you can see how it's done, but just you know, putting that out there. And then you have your slide adjuster there. You could use some rivets on the webbing if you wanted to. You don't need to. Um, actually, you don't need to with this bag because we sew it pretty well into those side straps. And that is all the material we need for this bag. Let's start sewing it up. Here we go. So we're gonna start. This is my back bottom lining piece. I have my zipper. I'm gonna put my zipper pull on after I assemble this part just so I'm not fighting with it. We're gonna lay our lining right side up, and we're gonna lay our zipper right side up. I'm going to just baste this on real quick. And I think, yeah, I'm gonna go right there. All right, here we go. So basting is done at an eighth inch seam allowance. And so is top stitching, and they're both done at a longer stitch length. I usually go about a five to five and a half for that. And then when you actually sew the pieces together, you go a little bit smaller on that stitch length. I usually like to do a four to four and a half on my stitch length for actually the final stitch of pieces together. All right, and then you wanna take your back bottom exterior piece right here. You're gonna lay it right side down on top of that. And now we're gonna sew at that full seam allowance. And again, I am doing this whole bag around my zippers with a quarter inch seam allowance instead of a 3 8 inch. Oops, just a minute, I need to move it over just a touch. 
And for this back piece, it doesn't really make that big of a difference, but for the zipper on the main closure, the zipper gusset, it makes it a little bit wider, like I explained in the beginning. I'm just throwing, throwing clips around. All right, I'm gonna do that full seam allowance now. these pieces out. Give it a good finger press. And then I'm going to take it and top stitch along this part of my exterior piece right along that zipper. Again, top stitching is done at about an eighth of an inch seam allowance with a longer stitch length. what you should be looking at right now front and back all right now you want to take your back lining piece and you want to place it right side up behind the zipper okay so your zippers right side up your lining piece is right side up and I'm lining it up on the top side of that zipper I'm gonna baste that on first and then I will add the back top piece to that. I just like to baste mine into place. Some patterns call for you clipping the other piece on and then sewing and not basting, but I like to just make sure it's gonna not move and stay secure for me, so. All right, so here we go. Now I want to take the back top piece and I am going to put that right sides together, right side down and line it up on that top part of the zipper that we just basted the back piece to. And now I'm going to sew this at my full seam allowance. Okay, just like that. Your zipper is underneath and that's your back piece. All right, here we go. Flip that up and now I want to top stitch along this top part of the exterior along that zipper. what you're looking at right now there's the front there's the back before I put on my zipper I am going to trace around this in the shape that I need it to be because this needs to be the main panel shape and when you have that zipper pull already on there it kind of gets in your way of tracing around it this is just what I this is my own kind of <laughs> way to do it. I have made lots and lots of these, probably about 10 of these. And this seems to be the best way for me at least to 
do this part. So you want to line this dotted line up or this dotted line is for the zipper. You want to align the dotted line with your zipper right here. All right. And make sure it's centered on your piece. And now you're just going to, is this marking? Let me just make sure this is marking. I'm just going to trace this out and it doesn't really matter if this is a removable pin or not because this is your cutout line which for some reason that one is not wanting to work for me so I'm going to use an actual pin because it doesn't matter. We are just going to be cutting this. Okay, so that's my outline for my piece. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew and baste this together before I cut this bottom piece all out. And then I will add on my zipper. So I'm going to baste that right inside of that cut line that I just made. And that'll give us our shape and it'll put everything together. Again, this is just the technique for this part that I have found to be the easiest. All right, now I wanna add my zipper pull on and then I will cut this down. And for this bag, I like my pull to go from right to left, which is different than normal bags that I do. I almost always say left to right, but because of the way that this bag hangs on your body, it makes it so, well, the way that I wear it, it makes it so that the zipper is up when it is closed, if that makes sense, because it hangs like this on my body. So I unzip it this way to open it. So just think about that when you're doing it. Okay. So I did notice I didn't quite catch my lining piece. So I will go and I will just do another tiny little stitch to catch that, but I'm going to cut this out real quick. So I want to make sure and melt my zipper ends where I cut. Melt those really good. Seal that up. And you can even, if you want to, you can stitch over this part so it closes up your zipper so your pull doesn't come off. going to tack this bottom one down real quick. Beautiful. All right, that's just out of my seam allowance. So I should be good. There is my back panel. Let's go to the front. Before I baste my lining piece with my back piece, I'm going to add my tag which I'm just gonna put my personalized tag on the inside back before I continue. So let's do that real quick. And then we'll go to our front piece and put on our tag on our front piece because we wanna do that right now too and get those all done. So I'm just kind of making a line for my center mark and going to Line that up right there. Looks good. All right. I'm going to sew that on.
awesome. So there's my inside lining piece. Isn't that cute? <laughs> All right, so I wanna lay that right side down and my back right side up. We're doing them wrong sides together because this back part is going to be bound. So you've got wrong sides together, okay? And I'm just clipping this around and then I will baste it and we'll be done with this back piece for right now. That and then that. Cute. All right, here we go. Let's baste these two layers together. looks awesome so your front panel piece the only thing you need to do to this is add a tag if you want a tag so if you want to add this cute my bad tag onto it go ahead and do that now I think it's a cute little addition and I'm going to add it on the front bottom but you can place it anywhere you want I think it's pretty stinking cute about right there. Okay, and we're gonna sew that on. I am not adding my lining to this and basting it like I did my back because the front pieces are going to be birthed. So the front is not bound. So I don't add those two layers together. Okay, I'm done with that. That's what I want that to look like. I will set that aside. Next step. We're gonna work on our zipper. So I am going to try my very best to show you how this is done or at least the way that I have learned how to do it. So this is the piece we're looking at and it has a little dot right there. I went ahead and poked a hole in it because you're gonna to need to mark that dot onto your pieces. All right, so I poked a hole in that and I mark it as I go, I don't do it yet. All right, so you wanna put this piece, just a second, give me a minute, okay. There is a slanted side of it and then there is a straight side. That straight side is gonna lay along the edge of your zipper. The reason you're mirroring that piece is because you're doing the same exact thing along the other end of the zipper down here. So make sure they are both on the same side of the zipper, okay? Just like that. So I'm just gonna start with one end first. I'm gonna take my exterior and I'm just going to baste along this edge, that piece on there. what I did. I now want to take the lining piece on the back side and do the same thing. So I want to take this one because there is a front and back to this black material. All right, straight side, lining up with the same side that this is on. 
All right, and now I'm gonna sew at a quarter inch. Again, the pattern calls for three eighths. I'm doing a quarter. So it still works. It still does just fine. <laughs> so whichever seam allowance your machine foot can do, whichever one you wanna do, go for it. All right, so I'm gonna put a little dot I put a little dot, I transferred that dot right there. So what that dot does is it tells me to stop my stitching and I'm going to take these pieces and line, kind of twist and line them up like that with the edge of my zipper. And then I'm sewing the rest of the piece and kind of going off right at this corner. It gives it a t like the tiniest little turn to this piece and it just fits really nicely when you put it all together. It seems a little strange, but it totally works. And it does take practice, but it's not as hard as people think it is. All right, here we go. And I'm ending, uh, maybe one more, right there, which is where my dot is, okay? It's a little bit to the right of that dot just because of my seam allowance. All right, so with that there, I like to use my stiletto tool and my fingers back here, and I'm gonna hold that, and I'm going to press it and line it up with the side. All right, and now we're just sewing off to that corner. I'll show you how that is done. I've shown this before. Okay, so it kind of pulled it. My zipper is lined up right there. It shows, it looks like it's kind of got a little wave to it, but trust me, when this is all done, and we turn this out, it just, it lines up right there so nicely and it tapers off and it adds that extra um, width we need to that zipper when we sew this back together. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that to the other side after I top stitch this. So I wanna flip both pieces out and I'm going to top stitch. these pieces out and you can base them together as well right now if you want to, which I probably will do. And then I'm just gonna come down and baste these two pieces together. So that's what it looks like when it's all done. Don't stress out about it. It's really not as hard as it seems. And if you don't do it perfectly, it still will work out just fine when you put your bag together. Okay, so now I wanna work on this other end, same side, okay, right here. So I'm gonna take my piece, I'm gonna line it up with the edge here. We're going to baste that. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do my lining first. Do my lining on the back first and baste that on. Just double check that you are doing the same side of the zipper. Take my other piece, line it up along that same edge. I'm 
And this time I gotta go from this way because it's just the way my brain works. So you need to get a tool that marks on this black. Take that piece, mark your dot. There's my dot. Okay, it's there. Here we go. Now my full seam allowance. Sorry for the arm. I'm not used to the camera being right there. I'm trying really hard to get you guys in and close to see this. All right, so I wanna move. I hold my zipper in place with my hand, my fingers back here, and I'm moving it right there to line up with that edge and kind of twisting it right there. kind of twist it and then sew it to that corner. All right, now I'm gonna top stitch these two together and we'll add the other side of the zipper panel. Based like we did the other side. That is seriously the trickiest part of the bag is just figuring out that little turn on that flange. Once you figure that out, you're golden. So that's what it should look like. We're going to go ahead and add the other side of our zipper panel. All right, I'm gonna attach my zipper panel to the other side of this zipper and then I'll add my zipper pulls on. I haven't forgotten about that. I will do that. Um, I have marked my centers just so I can line everything up right there. And we will clip that on. I'm gonna baste my exterior right sides together first and then I will add my lining full seam allowance. It looks like, how am I a little short? Is my zipper longer than it needed to be? This happened to me last time too. Oh, I think the pattern I was going off of was an old one and I cut my zipper too long, but that's okay. I'll trim it up and it'll, it'll still work out just fine. It's okay. It'll still work out. I think that was corrected in the later ones. I had a draft pattern and that's accidentally what I went off of. That's okay. centers up and now I'm going to sew that at my full seam allowance. So I'm going to press these both out and then top stitch. And then I will also baste the whole thing closed because I just need it to be one continuous thing. I don't need it separate.
Now I'm just gonna baste it. put on my zipper pulls. I'll trim my sides down even. Again, I think I was going off an old draft pattern and the zipper length was incorrect. So your pattern should be correct. Here we go. I'm going to add a zipper pull onto both ends. Now, you don't have to do a double zipper, but I think it looks pretty stinking cute with a double zipper. Is that right? No, it was right the other way. There it goes. There's one side. Hmm. How cute. All right, let's trim this down. Okay, let's add our gusset pieces on. So I have my two base pieces here. And again, I did widen them, but do you see how it's the same width here, which is what I wanted um, because I used that smaller seam allowance around my zipper. I needed this to be bigger. All right, so let's go with our exterior. You want it right sides together. We're gonna baste this on the side first. And then we'll add our lining piece at the full seam allowance. Okay, right sides together. Line that up with your edge. And now this seam allowance is a little bit, I do, um, do the pattern seam allowance here, which is bigger than a quarter because this needs to fit the bag correctly. So do this seam allowance at that bigger, bigger one. All right, and then once you have those, you wanna pull them out Okay, right sides out, wrong sides together. And we are going to top stitch along that base piece right up by the zipper. And that's what we should have front and back. Now, you're making a big loop because we're making a gusset. So you're gonna take the other exterior, bring it up and over to the other side of your zipper panel. And we're gonna baste that on first. Flip it over and you're going to take the lining piece and kind of smush that down and you're going to flip it up to the other side. Okay, so you should have your panel in the middle and your two base pieces on the outside. You're going to match it up with the other side here and we're going to sew at our full seam allowance just like we did on the other side. All right, 
right? And then you want to flip those two out. It's a little bit awkward now, but you can do it. And we're going to pull those to the side here and we're going to top stitch. Beautiful. You should now have a full circle, all right? You should have a full circle. We want to baste these two bottom pieces together because we want them to be all one, all right? So I'm just gonna kind of clip the center first, go out from there. And I just want to clip it together and then I will baste it. Looks like my black has a tiny stretch to it, so just kind of work it in there. It should all fit. Okay, I'm going to baste my bottom pieces together. I like to baste it like this, inside out, and along the side here. Do it however you feel works for you though. my gusset zipper panel and base all put together. Okay, we are going to move on to the next step. Let's work on our strap wing, which is this piece right here. So we want to fold it in half, just like this, and then we're gonna slide our webbing in there. Now this is where you can get some thickness in your bag for those sewing on a less heavy duty machine. You might want to pay attention because when you put your buckle on, this whole thing is being folded over and in your seam and that can add up when you're sewing through your zipper, two layers of this and your strap wing. So the way that I did it before is you can keep that out by moving it up just a little bit and just be sure you really get that on there good, but you don't have to move it all the way to your edge if you don't want to. And that'll help with those thickness layers. So just be aware of that. All right, we're gonna work just on our other strap in right now. Here's my big strap. We want to take our wing. So I've got my straight, straight edge here and my curved edge here. I'm gonna slip my webbing into that curved edge, all right? And you wanna leave a little bit of an overhang. She says about an inch, so about right there. All right. Now I want to sew starting right up here and down along this curved edge and to the end of my corner there. All right, so let's do that first. And I am using the full seam allowance she gives in the pattern for this part. what we have. Now I'm not going to, I'm just going to trim right here. I'm going to trim along this curve, but I'm not trimming my webbing. You want to keep, you want to keep that length of your webbing. All right, I'm going to turn this through. Get 
something to get your corners out really nicely. I have my chopstick tool, my handy dandy chopstick tool here. All right, and press those seams. I just like to use some clips. All right, now this next part is preference. Um, I like how she has it in the pattern. She does three rows of top stitching. So the first time we're just going to follow along eighth of an inch around and then base this side shut. The next one, you go about however far away from that line of stitching you wanna go. I go, I think about a quarter of an inch and you do another row of stitching and then you can go a third round and do a third row of stitching. It looks really cute on the bag. It gives your strap some more uh, reinforcement. If you didn't wanna do all of that, I would at least suggest doing some stitching along right here where your strap is. But I'm gonna do the three whole rows of stitching like she has in the pattern, because again, I really like that. So here we go. I'm gonna go this way though. Good, all right, here we go. I'm gonna do another row. You can just leave it at two if you want. I have done that before, but I'm gonna do one more. That's what that looks like. Isn't that cute? All stitched out, front, back. Hopefully that'll be hidden in my seam allowance. All right. So we're gonna put this one aside. Let's get our other one out. So we want to take this side and we are going to sew this together first. And then you add this on top and I'll show you what I mean. And again, I'm just showing you how the pattern is written. There are different ways to do this. I have done just D-rings in these wings and then done a swivel, swivel clip strap with it, a detachable strap. You can do it that way. Um, I'm just showing you how she has the pattern written. All right, she has you just sew this piece together first without the other piece on there. Turn that right side out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do all of those top stitchings 
like we did on the first strap weave. All right. Okay, so that's what that looks like. I'm going to take this. I want to take this piece. I'm going to put it in my webbing just like this. All right. And then if you want to add your D ring, this is where you add your D ring right on here. All right, I'm gonna put some tape in there to kind of tape everything where I want it. And then you sew this directly onto your strap. I mean, onto your wing, not your strap. All right, I'm just gonna put some tape on there. I'm gonna line up my edges and then press that together. So she does have a couple of markings. This, which you can do, you can not do, it's up to you. You can eyeball it. <laughs> so that's gonna be my first one and then yeah I think I'm gonna go a little bit closer on mine I'm gonna go about right there all right so I've got two markings my D ring is in the middle I'm going to take this line it up with the edge and the top of this strap wing all right, so your raw edges are together here. Now I'm going to sew across there and up to that first line I made and over and back, okay? And that attaches that there. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do another little box right here, attaching this and closing that D-ring off, all right? And then that makes it fully attached to your strap wing. Again, I'm just showing you how the pattern is. If you have a different way of wanting to do it, go for it. I have done it quite a few different ways when I have made this bag. So there are options, but this is a cute way to do it. I like the way it looks when it's all done. Just be aware of the thickness and make sure that your machine can handle the layers. Their first little square. I'm going to move that D ring down a little bit and then I will sew another right here. That's what that looks like when you're all done. Okay, it's 
all attached. We're good to go. If you really wanted to, you could add a rivet right there. You could add a rivet right here if you wanted to. I don't think it needs it. It's a small enough bag that that stitching should hold it just fine. All right, now we wanna attach these wings to our back piece. And we're just gonna measure an inch down, which is about even with this uh, top stitch of your zipper, at least it has been for me. Just make sure they're even on both sides. Yeah, mine lines up right there. And again, this is where I was talking about the thickness of your bag. Because when you put it on here, you are sewing through this zipper and this webbing, all right? My suggestion would be to keep that double layer of webbing out somehow if you have a more lightweight machine. All right, we're gonna baste those on. And we'll add the rest of the hardware onto this side of the strap at the end. All right, awesome. Done with that, let's go to the next step. Okay, we're gonna start assembling the bag. So I have my my gusset and I have my centers clipped top and bottom on that. I've clipped my center on the top and bottom of these. And then I'm also needing to mark my gusset marking on this, which is on your pattern piece. And it's right here. So I just wanna put a little line right there to know where to line up my gusset on it. And same for this side. And another trick, this lighter weight Lux nylon tends to fray um, along the edges. If you lightly run a lighter along your edges, it will seal that up and stop it from fraying. And it helps a ton. So, okay, so I'm gonna mark my front piece here. Both sides. All right, we're ready to rock and roll. I'm going to take my front piece and I'm gonna turn my gusset inside out, just like this. All right, so my front piece is right side up, my gusset is inside out. And we're gonna start lining up my centers and we're gonna line up the seam of my gusset along those markings we just did. And I wanna make sure it's my zipper side. Make sure it's your zipper side that we are attaching to the front of this bag. All right, you don't wanna do that backwards. And I find if I open my zipper, it's just a little bit easier to work with. I'm doing my top first. And then I'll come down to my bottom. So we are doing right sides together. And then I wanna line up. So where that marking is, I wanna line up the top of the seam for my gusset right there. All right. And then we will be fitting the rest of this in there. Turn it. Same thing. I want to line it up with that marking right there.
Okay, so now we need to fit in the curves on this. Important note, do not put snips in your zipper tape. If you go along and snip into your zipper tape, it will fray and it will ruin your bag. Don't do that. All right, so for the zipper tape, you just really have to try and work the material in as best you can, but do not clip. Same for this one up here. Now along the bottom here, you can totally do some clips into your gusset because this is not zipper tape, you're good to go. So do some clips down here in your gusset to get that area to fit. And that will help a ton down here. Same for this side. Not big snips, I'm doing about an eighth of an inch because your seam allowance is pretty small. Okay, so when you're all done, it should be all clipped in there. All right, front and back, that's what you're looking at. Now I'm going to baste this except for this very bottom because we are, so here's the deal. We're leaving a hole open in the bottom of this panel to turn it through and finish it. Um, so what you need to do is sew this bottom panel at your full seam allowance along here. So I'm gonna be sewing it at a quarter of an inch. I'm doing my whole thing at a quarter of an inch. So. I'll be doing just from here to here at a quarter inch seam allowance. And then I'll move it down and I'll do a basting eighth of an inch around the rest. The reason I do this is because when you leave that hole and you sew on your lining, you turn it through. If this exterior piece, these two exterior pieces are not sewn at that full seam allowance, it'll just be a basting stitch while everything else will be that full seam allowance and it will fold really funky and it will be hard to close it up to look nice. So there's a reason why we sew the bottom at that quarter inch seam allowance. So just pay attention to that. Um, and of course, I'm doing the quarter inch because I don't have a zipper foot. If you're doing the full seam allowance and you have a smaller foot, then do it at that seam allowance. But mine is a quarter. All right. Just along there is my quarter inch seam allowance. Now I'm gonna go to that eighth inch basting stitch for the rest of it. Show you from this side, okay? Now I'll do the basting. And I like to start a little bit before I ended that last row stitching, just so we get it. About right there and I like to use a stiletto for this to help hold all my layers in place it really does help with keeping it all together
Now it may not be perfect around these curves and you may have material poking out and that's actually totally fine. You won't be able to tell when your bag is done. Trust me, I know. I've made this bag many, many times. So don't freak out about that because even I didn't, look, mine slipped a little right there because I needed it to be smooth. And it was just, I guess it was just a tiny bit too small. And that's totally fine because you won't be able to notice that when the bag is finished. The most important thing is that you don't have lots of wrinkles and bumps along where you're sewing this together. All right, and I'm gonna stop just right after I started that other row of stitching down here. All right, so I'm gonna show you from this side because it's easier to see it. Oh, I have one little wrinkle right there. I may, I'm gonna smooth this out because that's gonna bother me. I don't want that pucker in the front of my bag. See how I had a pucker? So I'm gonna take this and just get that so it's flat. I don't want that pucker. All right, that's better. Fix those little puckers now because you won't want them in there later. <laughs> All right, so just showing you the bottom of my bag here. There's my bigger seam allowance. There's my smaller seam allowance. Now, I'm going to put all of this in. I am gonna trim this so it's even with my zipper because I want this other layer to be even with my zipper. Okay. We are going to sandwich your lining on top, okay? So this doesn't really have a wrong or right side. I mean, one side's a little bit smoother than the other, but it doesn't necessarily matter which side you use. We are now gonna clip this completely onto our bag. We're sandwiching all of it in the middle. We're doing right sides together, top, bottom, and then lining up those side gussets. And then we're gonna sew this at our full seam allowance, but we're gonna leave that hole open in the bottom along where we sewed that bigger stitch seam allowance, okay? Gusset marking up with that seam here. This green is kind of a stretchy material, so I may have to trim it down just a little bit just because it stretches all funky. Yeah, I'll definitely have to trim it along this curve and that's totally fine because I trimmed that front piece down so it'll be trimmed to match. And it'll all still fit, don't worry. <laughs> Trust me. Okay, line this up. Try my hardest to get it flat right here in the corners. Just 
turn them out a tiny bit so I can see what I did. See, I'm trying to flatten this gusset corner out here. You kind of have to work it. There we go. That's everything. It's all clipped on there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to follow this side of my bag because this is right in line with that zipper and I want it to be even all the way around. So I'm going to follow that and then I'm going to start here and then I'm going to stop there and leave this open along the bottom of my bag. All right, here we go. I'm just gonna trim off a little bit of overhang there with my lining. Again, trust me, it will all work out just fine. <laughs> as long as they're the same, when you're all done, you're good to go. All right, and then you should have a hole in the bottom here. Okay, let's turn it through. Actually, just a sec. I'm going to trim just this bottom a little bit more here. Don't trim up here because your zipper tape is there. You don't want to trim your zipper tape. You can trim those bottom two corners. All right. Handy dandy chopstick. We're gonna poke out all of those corners. So this part, you have a couple of options. All right, this is what we should be looking at now. Yes, looks good. All right, there is my bag. Now, you have this hole in the bottom here, right? You can hand sew this shut if you really want to, <laughs> or you can top stitch this panel and in the process of top stitching, we'll close up this hole, which is what I'm gonna do. All right, this is how I like to do it. So you have those two options, do what works best for you. I will show you this way. So I like to get a piece of double-sided tape here. I'm gonna lay it along this gusset edge seam here. 
So along that raw edge there. Cut mine just a little too long there. Okay. And then I'm going to carefully place this lining. I'm going to fold it like this. I'm going to fold it under and I'm going to place it along that double sided tape where I need it to go. And then when I turn it and top stitch it, it'll catch the edge of this folded lining and it will seal my pocket shut or my lining shut. Come on tape. There we go. All right, so that's closed. I'm gonna turn it, I like to turn it this way to top stitch it and put it under my foot. Just pulling out all of my edges, okay. So now when I top stitch down here at the bottom edge, it will close up this lining. That's the way I like to do it. Or again, you can take a needle and a thread and just stitch that shut. Up to you if you don't want to top stitch. All right. So I caught all of my lining there. It's great. Let's look at the front. Hmm, so cute. All right, there is the front of my bag. Ta-da! Looks good. All right, so all we need to do is add the back. Let's do it.
Okay, so for the back of our bag, we are going to bind it, which means we need to turn this inside out. And we have the back of our bag right side up. All right. And we're going to attach the two right there. I need to put my gusset marking on this piece real quick so I can line it up correctly. Just like we did on our front pieces. You kind of need that to get it where it needs to go. It just helps. All right. I like to roll up my webbing kind of in the middle right there. It's gonna get in your way, but you know, it works good enough. Okay, so I want, so my right sides are together and then I'm going to clip along just like I did. <laughs> I didn't clip my centers. Just like I did with my front panel. We're gonna clip the centers and then line up that gusset side marking and then go from there fitting it all in. All right, here we go. Again, it does help if your zipper is open. It just always helps putting together bags if your zipper is open. It just gives it more flexibility and more give. All right, and then I'm gonna line up my bottom. Gusset marking right there along the edge. All right, so now we just need to fit all of our curves in here, we can snip away because there's no zipper to be concerned about along these curves. Just don't do too big a snips. Make sure you're staying within that seam allowance. Again, right here is going to be your thickness, okay? That clip's broken. <laughs> that clip's broken. <laughs> If you really wanted to, you could put some staples along these curves at the bottom. If it, if you think it's gonna be too hard and slip too much, that is definitely an option. All 
All right, I think we're there. There is my panel all clipped on, all clipped in. We're gonna go ahead and sew that at our full seam allowance, and then we'll add our binding. All right, that is all sewed on. I'm gonna get my binding and we are going to attach that next. All right, we're gonna use this cute reflective ribbon that came with the bag and we're just going to fold it over the raw edge of the bag here. It's pretty dang simple. So you're just folding it over just like that, trying to do it as evenly as possible and we're gonna clip it all along this raw edge of the bag. Now you can either leave it raw like this, or you can fold it over so it has that folded edge when you're done. It is your call. I think I'll fold this over. So I've got that all clipped on. I'm gonna just kind of make sure it looks good. Yeah, looks good. All right, we're gonna now sew this binding onto our bag and then we just have to put on our strap hardware.
So after that is all done, you want to turn it over and make sure that you caught all of it on this side, which I did. Eh. Shows a little bit of my seam right there, but that's not the end of the world. It looks pretty dang good. So let's turn it out. Let's see what we got. All those corners pushed out. I love this bag. It is one of my favorites by far. All right. There it is. We're just seeing the outer strap. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Cute, cute. That just needs poked out. Okay. We're almost there. Beautiful, beautiful. Let's add our strap hardware and then we're done. Okay, our strap here, our hardware. Here we go. So you wanna get your slider first, up and over the bar. Make sure your strap is right side up and not twisted going to your bag. Mine is, mine's good. So you wanna put your slider on first, your slide adjuster, and then you wanna get your buckle piece and go up and back down, okay, through your buckle. So this is what we're looking at so far. Once that is in, you wanna take that, this end of the strap and we are going to go under, oops, sorry, we're gonna go under and over this bar underneath the webbing. So I want to go under here, kind of got to push it all up and out and then back down. So it's underneath your top layer of webbing, right? So that is what you should be looking at. The raw edge needs to be in between these two layers. If it's in between these two layers, it'll still work. It'll just show more and you don't really want that. Okay, so I am going to take this right here. I'm gonna sew that on. I'm just gonna do two straight lines of stitching. You could do a box, you could do it however you want, and then we're done. That is it. I will tell you, if you are leaving this raw edge and you're not covering this, make sure you have melted that really, really good because if you don't seal this, it'll start to unravel. And then we're done. Okay, we're all done making our Louis waist bag with the Bag Making Bees Club of the Month. I, I'm in love. This is seriously one of my favorite all-time patterns. I hope you guys love it as much as me go check out this subscription box. It is just a really fun new thing. I, I, I'm in love, guys. I'm in love. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you haven't, let me know if you guys have any comments and questions. I will try to answer them all and we'll see you next time. Bye.